Okay, welcome back to the third part of One Man's Faith today. Now we're going to jump ahead, all right? That was, that was review from two weeks ago. All right, now, today, let's look. Verse 3 of chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself, Jesus gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from this present evil age. Listen, that he might rescue us from this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father to whom be the glory forever. It's God's will that we be rescued. Do you see that? That he might rescue us from this present evil age according to the will of God. Now, what I want to look at today is the will of God. What is the will of God? That's kind of a nebulous do 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 type thing sometimes to us. Because we say, well, I don't know what it is. Well, why don't we? We need to know it. And yes, we should. All right? The will of God is God's plan and God's desire, number one, for you individually in your personal life, and in your spiritual life. In other words, remember I said he is Lord? He wants to be Lord over you. He wants to direct you. He wants you to turn to him and say, Father, who do I marry? Lord, is this the lady or the man that you have for me? Father, what school do you want me to go to? Lord, what job do you want me to have? He wants to be a part of those things be because he's Lord. I mean, it, it, in a sense, it's his prerogative to direct us, and he wants to. It's part of his love for you and me. So, he wants, to, he wants to be a part of your life, and he wants to be a part of your ministry. What are you called to do? Now, a lot of times when a minister especially says, in the ministry, we get this, eh, no, type thing, because we, you know, we don't want to go into the ministry. Well, can I tell you a secret? God doesn't want you to either, in most cases. You see, there's only five really positions, six if you include deacons. You know, pastor, there's our evangel uh, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. So not all of us are to fit into those. But you see, ministry is not just about what the word ministry means, and minister is service. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you can be of service to God. You can show those that are around you who God is. You can show them that, wow. Or they can say, Neil, you never miss a day of work. Matter of fact, that happened to my wife. One of, one of, her, one of her students said, Ms. Owen, you never miss a day of work. Well, you know why? Because she prays. You see, God wants to protect you that way. As a matter of fact, let me show you some things. Let's look, what is the will of God for you, okay? What is His will for your life? Let me give you some generalities to start with, okay? Number one, He doesn't want you to perish. Okay? 2 Peter 3 says, verse 9, The Lord is not slow about His promises, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Now, if you've, if you've already accepted Jesus as Lord, then you're not going to perish. But if you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord, you will perish. 
And by perish, that means you will not be in God's presence after you die. And listen, that's not a good thing. Because what you're looking at right here, besides being a handsome dude, is the fact that this is my spacesuit. The real me is inside. It's my spirit. And that's the way you are. The spirit never dies. And your spirit, the real you, is either going to be with the Lord forever and ever. And listen, to me, it's almost infantable to think it. Because the 70 or 80 years we have here are so minuscule compared to the rest of the time. And, you know, it just it boggles my mind. And the thought that that time could be spent in torment forever scares, if I can say this, the hell out of me. Because that's not where I want to go. And hopefully you don't either. And listen, if, you're, you know, if you don't believe that, I challenge you to get into the Word of God and prove to me that it's not real. And the Word of God tells me that if I do not have Jesus as my Lord, then I am going to be in a very dark, bad, tormentable place forever. And that's the outcome we have if we don't accept Jesus as Lord. Peter tells us here that God wants nobody to perish. That's God's will. He doesn't want any to perish. Now, does that mean that everybody will go to heaven? Unfortunately, no, because there are people out here that will not accept this fact that Jesus has to be Lord of your life. Romans 10, 17. No, 10, 10 9, and 10. If you will confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. The opposite of that is, if you do not confess Jesus as Lord, you will not be saved. Let me look at the other verse, John 3, 16. You know this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. There's that word again. God doesn't want you to perish. And the way we don't perish is to believe in his only begotten son, in Jesus Christ, and believe that he is Lord of lords, King of kings. And that he came and that he died for you and I so that we could live and have abundant life right now. and that he has a job for you. Now, let's carry this a little further. If we're not perishing and we have been taken out of that, then we are considered saved. Does that make sense? If we're not perishing, then we're saved. Okay? The word for save is the word sozo. Okay? When we say, I have been saved, we're not just saying that our soul has been saved from perishing. The word sozo that is used means to save, to be cured, to be made whole. Let me give you some examples of what I'm talking about. Matthew 9. Verse 20, 
And the woman who had been suffering from a hemorrhage for 12 years came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she was saying to herself, if only I touch his garment, I will get well. And Jesus, turning and seeing her, said, Daughter, take courage. Your faith has made you well. At once, the woman was made well. All three times where it says, get well, made well, is the word so-so. So literally we can say, if I touch his garment, I will be saved. Woman, your faith has saved you. And at once, the woman was saved. Salvation is not just heart, soul, salvation, saving. It goes beyond that. When we are saved, it's our whole body, soul, and spirit. Let me give you another example. Mark 6, 53 to 56. When they crossed over, they came to the land of the Gennesaret and moored at the shore. And when they got out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him and ran about the whole country and began to carry there, here and there on their pallets those who were sick to the place that he was. Wherever he entered the villages or cities or countryside, they were laying the sick in the marketplaces and imploring him that they might just touch the fringe of his cloak. Sounds familiar, huh? And as many as touched it were saved. The word is actually, and they were cured. They were cured. They were saved. Mark 10. There was a blind man, Bart, uh, Bartimaeus, came to him. And, Jesus, and he was called out, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him here. And as the blind man came, saying to him, take courage, stand up, he's calling you. Throwing aside his cloak, he jumped up and went to Jesus, and answering him, Jesus said, what do you want me to do to you? Now, you know, that seems like a strange question to a blind man, right? But he wanted the man to be able to say, I want my sight. And the blind man said, Rabboni, I want to regain my sight. If the blind man had said, Lord, I've got arthritis in my hand then what do you think he would have walked away with? But it goes on, it says, And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Your faith has saved you. Sozo. Sozo. Being saved is more than just an eternal relinquishment from from, from perishing. It's our whole spirit, soul, and body. i got to take a break. So go ahead, get a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. 